All right, we live? I think we're live. Hopefully we are live. I am going to check and make sure we are live. Then we will get started with the dismal maze. Alrighty then, we are in fact live, and I am doing an AFK Arena stream, and in this stream, I am going to be clearing the Arcane Labyrinth's Dismal Maze, so if you want to see me do this more often, let me know. Hopping in VC and Discord, and I am setting my status to online in Discord. So, let us get to it. So, if you haven't played AFK Arena before, once you hit Chapter 2, you unlock the Arcane Labyrinth right here. And, um, once you hit Chapter 27 you unlock a special mode of the Labyrinth called Dismal Maze. Dismal Maze um, requires a team of three players, and um, the heroes, it takes the strongest of that hero out of all of the players in your team, and you use it in the Dismal Maze. So, with that out of the way, let us get into this dismal maze. Um, first, I wanted to show that I am actually contributing a hero right here. That one is mine. And if I remember correctly, yes, the Namora is mine. What else of the heroes are mine? Um, I think the Peggy is mine. Um... Pretty sure Baden is mine. Um, and then Albedo is mine. So those are the heroes I'm contributing to the Dismal Maze team. Oh, I, I did I point out Mishka? I think I did. Um, anyway, now let us proceed into the Dismal Maze. So, Dismal Luck, um, le let me explain that, I guess, um, there are effects that take place, and in f they, they take effect on your heroes, pretty much, um, the first one, allied heroes lose health equal to 20% of the damage they deal to enemies, um, when an enemy hero dies in battle, an explosion will occur, where they are slain, which deals AoE damage equal to 50%, 15% of each allied hero's health. Hello, Seg. Um, the third effect is the Kiss of Death. Each time an enemy hero is slain, the hero that dealt the killing blow will deal 50% less damage for the next 5 seconds. So, knowing that, let us get into the Dismal Maze. What I usually do is I first scan the artifacts ahead, take a look at what I want. So we have the Hellspawn head, 
Allies standing on the enemy side of the battlefield receive 40% less damage and deal 40% more damage. The Knight's Fury. Allied heroes' critical strikes cause enemies to become stunned for 2 seconds. Each enemy may only be stunned once every 5 seconds. Book of War. Allied backline heroes receive 70% less damage while frontline heroes are alive. And then, the Silent Hope. First allied hero to use their ultimate skills able to recover 1,000 energy points over 5 seconds. Can be used once per battle. The Heavenly Soul deals damage to all enemies equal to 20% of their max health and stuns them for 5 seconds at the beginning of battles. Hmm. I'm trying to decide. I think I want to head for Heavenly Soul and Book of War. I didn't want help. Um, so let's go here. And this is where we set up our team. As you can see, we only get to use four factions. But that's okay. Because I don't think we'll need all of them. So I think I'm going to go Celestial Twins, Awakened Tailene, Scarlet, Um, I might actually go regular tailing just for the healing instead of the, um, shielding, because I don't think I'll need shielding. Um, Mahira back row, and wait a second, we could run God Comp, actually. Hold up. Well, not entirely God Comp, just most of God Comp. Um, Rowan. Let's do Taylene. Twins. I think this is God Comp. And then we just put in our damage dealer as Lucretia, but then again, Rowan's gonna die. Let's just see how that works. And the cool thing about Taylene is that if she loses all of her health, she um, can resurrect herself as long as there are still allies alive on the battlefield. So we don't need to worry about Taylene dying. So... This should work. you can see we've already cleared two stages. Now I'm kind of concerned about the Thorin and the um, Isabella, but we should be fine. Yeah, we were fine. And notice Taylene died, but that's okay because as I said, she will resurrect herself and she is back in this battle. And that works with both the regular and the awakened tailing. So here we've got Gorvo, Solus, um, Desira, Iran, and I didn't even catch what the fifth one. S Saurus, yes, Saurus. Um, here's where I've got to decide: Do I want the Knight's Fury? I want Knight's Fury because Lucretia and Scarlet are. Wait, no, I don't have Scarlet. Never mind. But Lucretia is going to be dealing tons of crits, so. If we can stun, that would be amazing. And there's the Knight's Fury. Um, also, this boss allows us to choose between three random relics. So that is going to be really nice. Um, so I think I'm going to head this path.
Um, yeah, I think we're going to head this way. If my health were low and I were concerned, I would go for the Fountain of Vitality. But I think I'm just going to head for the guard. Take them out for more loot. Because I'm not really concerned about my health, and I think I'll survive the boss. We've got Silas, Lucretia, Taylee, Numisu, and I think that's Anarchy on the opposing side. Um, as you can see, the boss gave us tons of rewards. So, here we go. We've got our choice between three relics here. And... Um... Let me read them all off to you. Um, I've got the Nos Nosferatu's Fane, which increases allies, allied heroes' life leech points by 30. The Angelic Thorn reduces the duration of, of the majority of debuffs affecting allied heroes, and the Watchful Eye increases the duration of the majority of debuffs affecting enemy heroes by 60%. I think I'm going to take the Nosferatu's Fang just because of that life leech. Now we have another opportunity at the Silent Hope, which I really like the look of that. Um, we have another opportunity of the Watchful Eye, which I also like the looks of that. Then we also have the Vanguard's War Flag. Frontline and allied heroes receive 40% less damage from enemies and recover 50% more energy when in injured. We have the Spiker. Um, when an enemy is affected by a crowd control skill, rocks will fall down upon them, dealing damage equal to 30% of their max health. Each enemy may only be targeted once every 3 seconds by this effect. And... We have the Demon's Plight. Yes. So, I am I know what path I'm taking. Silent Hope, Demon's Plight. Because the enemies with the Demon's Plight, enemies are unable to use their ultimate skills for the first 30 seconds of battle. Which is really important. So we're heading this, this way. See, the only hero that's really gotten low on health this whole run has been Taylene. And as I said, that's fine. Because, you know, health recovery. Um, So here goes the Silent Hope. And Zolrath just rewound. Um, see, the front lines are Zolrath and Grez. Then back lines are. Over the back lines, we have. Um, Isabella, Kren, and Desira. Alrighty then. Swept another stage. As long as you know what you're doing, you know, it's not that. It's 
it's not that difficult to do if you know what you're doing. That's what I was trying to say. Alrighty. So it looks like we're heading for the witch's den. Which allows me to exchange one of my relics for one of the ones there. So we'll have to see if any of them are worth it. The Nosferatu's Fang isn't really that good. So if they have anything interesting in there, I'll probably exchange the Nosferatu's Fang. I really need to start paying more attention to the stream chat. Um, let's see, we got a choice between the Shadow Fall. The crit ratings of allied he heroes are increased by 20 points. If a player possesses the relic Heart Seeker, crit ratings are increased by 60 points. Then we have the Zealous Crusader. Allied heroes deal 100% more damage to any enemies that currently have less than 300 energy points. And the War Axe of Courage. Allied heroes' normal attacks and skills deal an additional 100% damage to enemies that currently have more than 50% of their max health. I think I might go for the War Axe of Courage. Or the Shadow Fall. Um, I'm having a tough time deciding. Um, I think I'm going to go for the Shadow Fall for the crit rating and exchange for the Nosferatu's Fang. This whole formation is um, based around Lucretia, if you couldn't tell. So, Spider Thread Gloves, all enemies are cocooned for up to 5 seconds. Enemies are immediately released from the cocoon after losing 25% of their max health. Perceptive Spyglass increases the attack rating of backline allied heroes by 80% whenever there are no nearby enemies. And the Warden of Salvation, whenever an allied hero's health is lower than 50%, Damage is re received is reduced. I think I'm going to go for the spider thread gloves. Nice, we got some engraving cores. Um, let's see. We have the, um... Let's see, are there any relics we've already um, looked at? There's the Book of War, which we've seen already. Um, Overload. Um, sorry, if I stop at random points, I'm chatting with people on Discord. Um, Um, whenever an enemy's energy points exceed 900 for the first time, they become stunned for 5 seconds. Um, the first time an ultimate skill is used by an ally hero during battles, causes all enemy heroes to fall asleep for 4 seconds. Once enemies awaken, they shall receive 25% of the damage that was dealt to them while they were asleep. Don't think I want that probably want the book of war um the ancient protector all allied heroes receive a shield at the beginning of the battle which exists for 10 seconds that is able to mitigate damage equal to 50 percent of their max health 
really nice. Though I don't think I can go for that, just because of the roamer. Um... Let's see, we have Timepiece of Courage. After 10 seconds of battle, allied heroes receive an attack and defense rating increase of 40%, which in which lasts till the end of the battle. That Timepiece of Courage seems good. Something you will not notice about the third floor is that, um... There will be battles where you have to use two teams. Alright, so this is one of the two team fights I was telling you about. So we're going to go through with our first team, but then we're also going to need to set up a second team. So, for the second team, I'm going to use Scarlet for main damage. Um, because Scarlet does tons of damage. She's a burst damage healer, and in my opinion, I think she's the top damage dealer in the game. I haven't really checked many others, but I think she's top damage dealer. Um, not gonna use Brutus. Oh, I can use another Lucretia. Okay, that's interesting. Because apparently I have a... I'm gonna need to put the um, AD engraved Lucretia on the other team. I'm putting this AD engraved um, Scarlet here, though. And for our Scarlet team, we can't use Rowan. But what I'm going to do is we're going to run Rain for the extra damage. We're going to run you. Hook you up to Scarlet. Um, and as for Celestials and Hypogeans, we're going to run Awakened Tailing. Um... I think I'll just run Estrelda, and that's going to be it. Oh, okay, Scarlet died. Hold on, hold on. Don't... Uh, great. The battle ended, and Scarlet is dead. Um, um, let's see. Yeah. Do I have a replacement Scarlet? If not, I have an idea. Well, even if we have a replacement Scarlet, it'd be a good idea. Wait, what happened? What happened? No, 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 no. I wasn't paying attention. That's not good. We lost our core. Okay. That's, that's nice. 
That hasn't happened in ages, so I'm honestly... I wasn't too worried until just now, but now I'm a bit concerned for this dismal maze run. So I think I'm just gonna run something like this. I'm gonna hope this works. That worked way better than I thought it would. Except the Satrana is nearly dead. And that's not what I want. Um, we hook you to Scarlet. This really isn't going as I thought it would, if you guys can't tell. Do we have Hendrik? Yes, we have Hendrik. And as long as Lucius can start shielding, we are, yes, he shielded, and we are golden. Heading this way. This really isn't going as planned, if you guys can't tell. I, I thought I would be doing way better. Turns out this run is absolutely sucking. There goes Satrana. And Sophia. Alright. This is absolute garbage. But you know what? I it, We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Kren, Skreg, Brutus, um, Athelia. That's much better. Okay. As long as Kren doesn't die, which Kren didn't die, now we run our Lucius Hendrick, Scarlet, Rosaline, and Rain. And that went really well, actually. As long as this team survives, we're good. Kren is nearly dead. Kren died. But we still won. And since I didn't revive any heroes, I am still a dismal master. And there we go. And I'm going to spend these, spend these since I'm max. And that adds one more level to our crystal. Which hopefully, potentially, we could use to pass this stage. If we can't... I'm tempted to replace my Lucretia with the rental Lucretia, just to pass the stage. Alright, here's what we're going to do then. Flip these around. We replace you with you. We put you there, and then we put you there. First, I need to try this team to make sure it works without Mishka. If it doesn't work without Mishka, well then... It doesn't work without Mishka. This sucks. Mahira needs to go out. Mahira just needs to go out. That's all I have to say. 
Mahira just needs to be gone. Um, I guess I can run Tassie here. And running back row, Lucy makes her die. Okay. Still not good enough. It's because of the Warwick. Lucretia dies too fast to Warwick. And so does Mishka. Nope. Can't pass this stage. Just can't. I'm literally stuck there. As for the towers, maybe I could, with that extra level, do some damage in Graveborn? Definitely not. Lightbearer Tower, maybe? Come on. Let's go! Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we got this, we got this. This sucks. I think I'm stuck. <sighs> I need to stargaze Mortis. After I get, um, one star Lucy, we are stargazing Mortis. Well, I think that's... Probably it. Can I use my tier 2 might stone, though? I think I'm just gonna use it on Lucius, because why not? Oh, wait a second, the hellscape opened up. Confined by the gaze of others, yet you still desire freedom. So I'm gonna see which gets more damage, the Scarlet or the Lucretia. Because I'm gonna run Rental Lucretia and then Rental Scarlet, and we're gonna see which one gets more damage. So that got 695,000. I don't think I'll need the defense right at the beginning. But let's see how much this gets us. It looks like way less damage. Oh, no. As long as other heroes start dying before Lucretia, yes, Lucretia needs to live. She just needs to live. Live. Come on. Come on. More damage. 
nice. All right. Well, I think I'm done for this stream. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. But that's all for this stream. I'll see you guys next time.